Yes. Yes. Are they there because like no one claims them? Because they, you know, got they got like in, impounded somehow, and nobody went to go get them. Is that typical? Well, mo happens? with most when you impound cars, a lot of them you impound because they're pursuant to an investigation, so they're not released because police put a hold on them. That was not the case here because it was unrelated to this. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of them sit there. Uh, without reference to this particular case, quite often we find that they sit there for qu uh, quite a length of time because people don't have th the money to pay either a tow bill and or a storage charge or issues like that. So there's a wide variety of reasons why people don't claim them. Uh, again, without being reference to this case, those are some of the issues we run into. Quite often we'll run into issues that it's picked up and put in a pound and it may look okay. Uh, but it has uh, mechanical issues that are very expensive to fix so people just don't pick them up. So why this one wasn't picked up, I, I can't address that issue. Those are just some of the reasons that we know cars stay in impound for some time. Where in South Beloit, sure? I, I don't have the exact address where it was at. It was an impound that South Beloit police use. Okay. Was there anything else in the trunk? We couldn't comment on anything from the vehicle other than what we, we just did today that yielded the discovery of the two inmates. <laughs> And you said you made the discovery yesterday? Late yesterday afternoon. <coughs> and so when did you confirm the two separate skeletal remains? This morning when we had them both x-rayed. We suspected so yesterday. However, we confirmed it this morning. Where's the car now? Uh, we still have it as evidence. It's, it's not in South Floyd, is it? No. no. Okay. <laughs> yes, we, it, it, the vehicle is a bigger vehicle, but to us it's, it's simply another piece of evidence that we're processing pursuant to an ongoing investigation and it's treated as such. Does this give us reason to believe that Ms. Stockton was in the area last year and that's when her car was impounded? Do you know anything? Well, we know when her car was impounded that she was driving the car at the time that it was impounded. Part of your investigation, you were looking into cars that were linked to Ms. Stockton. It led you to the South Beloit impound lot, and that's where you discovered uh, the two packages in the trunk uh, late yesterday afternoon, and then this morning confirmed with the x rays that it was two skeletal remains of two incidents. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And we anticipate that the investigation will take a few weeks oh, before we learn. Absolutely. What, what is do you have any idea of what we might be able to learn first and, and how long that would be? Um, you know, Tuesday we'll be able to determine exactly how many bones we have, um, how much of the skeleton we've been able to recover. The pathologist and anthropologist will be looking at the bones for any signs of trauma, so we may or may not be able to find trauma on Tuesday. Uh, this may very well even go into Wednesday because of the number of bones that there are in a body. Then there will be DNA testing taken. Hopefully we'll be able to get some toxicology to be sent in, and all of that will need to be sent in and be processed. So there may not be a whole lot that we're going to learn Tuesday or Wednesday, but we should know a little bit more. Does the age of these bones make you believe that they're possibly twins, or are they completely different ages? It, it's hard to tell right now because we've not disturbed them any. We've kind of left them as they are so that our forensic anthropologists and pathologists can take a look at them before we, you know, go trying to determine anything. The only thing we, we needed to determine yesterday and this morning were two things. One, that we had one or two infants, and two, that they were actually, you know, human remains and not some sort of animal or, and or something else. And both of those have been confirmed by a forensic pathologist, x-rays, and myself and my staff. Were the remains just bones? Haven't really unwrapped it, so not sure. That's what we're seeing visually at this point. But what else we'll see once we get into the packaging, I don't know. What was it that you just said? Did you just take like, a, like one bone from each bag and x-ray that? And then no, we, we took both both packages uh -huh. and we had them x-rayed. 
because we wanted to see if we had two skeletons and see if we had uh, two skulls and you know two oh, vertebrae and that's things how like you that. Okay. Right, right. If the car was in a police um, impound lot, what are the chances that you know outside or the public had access to this vehicle? That would be pure speculation at this point in time, and uh, that's obviously something that you know, would be considered during the course of an investigation. So as of right now, except for it being her car, do we have, we have no relationship between the two um, packages and this document? We, we have an ongoing investigation, and, and really all we can release now is, is to connect to Ms. Stockton is simply the vehicle where the infants were found. Beyond that, we couldn't comment. That will be part of our investigation. As the sheriff indicated, you know, their hope is is that uh, the public would be able to provide us with some assistance. Um, obviously, the sheriff didn't mention it directly, but if anybody does have any information, that the sheriff's department is the place to be contacted. And uh, as he indicated, uh, this is an ongoing investigation, and uh, from this point forward, obviously, the investigation will hopefully tell us more. But. Uh, at this juncture, what we know is, uh, has been provided. And um, if you have any other questions, we'd certainly be glad to answer them. We as investigators have to keep an open mind. And again, we learned a long time ago uh, uh, not to be surprised because uh, you never know what investigations are, are going to yield and what different directions they're going to go. And uh, it's, it, we have to remain focused and see how far we can go with this. and. Uh, and bring it to its, uh, if there's a thousand pieces of information, we want to go pick up all thousand. If there's a hundred thousand, we don't stop until we hit all hundred thousand of those. You just have to keep an open mind and go forward because as you go forward, information that you gather today may change what you thought yesterday, and it may change the direction you, you go tomorrow. So. I think the fact that we have two infants that have died and however they died is just very, very sad. Just sadness, that's all. At, at this point in time, it's uh, part and parcel of an ongoing investigation. Uh, State's Attorney's Office has um, been involved since the beginning, assisting the Sheriff's Department um, and the coroner um, with uh, this particular investigation. Um, we'll continue to do that uh, until it uh, reaches a point in time. Uh, where we can make any decisions that are necessary with regards to whether or not a crime has been committed and uh, and who committed it and whether charges are appropriate. But at this juncture, it would be premature to talk about any of, any anything of that nature. What's critical, and I'm going to leave you with this, um, we started out by saying it's really critical to reach out to the public and, and help us uh, uh, find those people out there that may have had an occasion to come across Miss Stockton in the last eight years. We, they could call Crime Stoppers or call us. But it's the type of information to where we really wish they would call us so we could sit down and have a conversation. Um, because um, based on the information that we recover, I don't know if we're looking for that bit of uh, information out there to be all telling. I think it's a combination of all the above. So. Again, anyone that may have had a, a reason to have a contact with Ms. Stockton, we would really like to have a conversation with you um, about what you what you may know, and I think that's critical for us. So Crime Stoppers are er us, um, but if you could contact us, we would really appreciate it. We'd like to have that opportunity to sit down one-on-one -on -one and, and talk to you. What number from the county should we call? Dominic, which one would you like them to call? 6319-6400. I don't have the address. I know it's an impound in South Bloy. Is there a name of it or anything like that? I'm sure there is. I just don't know what it is. And this is a, a place in South Bloy where uh, South Bloy police uses this. They take their vehicles that they um, seize when they are when they're out. Um, I believe that's what it is, yes. And we, we have also asked, uh, you know, because this is an ongoing investigation, uh, we have asked South Bloyd to should anybody inquire through there, please just refer them to us uh, because of the sensitivity of the investigation. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.